Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual family council meeting. My name is Jamie Rose, and I am your virtual meeting coordinator. We're just going to review our confidentiality reminder. Please refrain from using the name of your loved one. Do not name specific facilities. Please use a nursing home or the personal care home to present to the group. If you need specific assistance, please use the chat feature to state which county you are in and we'll get you connected to your assigned ombudsman. And just a reminder, these calls have public access and are designed for family members and friends of residents in long-term care facilities. So our meeting agenda this evening, um, we're gonna get our virtual meeting tips from Jay, and then we'll turn it over to Candy to introduce our peer panel to get the peer perspective. And then at the end of the meeting, I'll jump back on and we'll review our upcoming meeting topics. So without further ado, we'll turn it over to Mr. Rotz. Jamie, good evening, everybody. First of all, you've been placed in, in mute upon entry. You will we'll open the lines in a bit so that you're able to share. If you would like to speak or have a question, please use the raise hand feature. Once you raise your hand, we will know to acknowledge you and unmute your line. If you hover your mouse near the bottom of the screen, you will see the participants tab. That can be expanded if you would like to see that. The chat feature is at the bottom of your screen as well. Once you maximize it, you will be able to chat with presenters or others during the meeting. Closed captioning is available during this call. If you press the CC button, again, at the bottom of your screen, you can enable the closed captioning. If you need to step away, you can stop sharing your camera by clicking on the camera icon at the bottom of the screen. You can click on it again to start sharing your camera again. And finally, any concerns or complaints can be directed to me at the State Ombudsman Office. The telephone number is 717-783-8975, or I can be reached by email at capital LTC hyphen ombudsman at pa.gov, G-O-V. So this evening, we're especially delighted to be hearing from some of our Pennsylvania Empowered Expert Residents or peers. And we have the perfect person to introduce them to. Our Southeast Regional Ombudsman Specialist and our Peer Program Coordinator, Ms. Candy Schreffler. Candy, it's all yours. Thank you, Jay. What a nice introduction. I have to first and foremost apologize for my dogs in the background. I have no one here that can put them out for me, so excuse them. Um, many of you may know about our program that is named Peer. However, some of you that are viewing this may not know. So I want to give you a little bit of background on this great program. It started in 2003 with three long-term care residents that approached the state ombudsman office looking to take the peer train, the ombudsman training, excuse me. The state office responded to that request by developing an advocacy and empowerment training for those three residents to address the issues within their facility. The program was then piloted in five established ombudsman regions and standardized curriculum was then developed for those residents that reside in various long-term care settings. The next step after that was creating a peer train the trainer session. This is a training that we train the local ombudsman to train the peers in their facilities. It was established to make the program accessible to all counties that choose to participate. To date, Peer is currently in 55 out of 67 counties. There have been close to 4,000 peers trained since the inception. We currently have approximately 1,500 active peers. These past few years, as you all know, have proven that a worldwide pandemic cannot stop our peers from their activities. Along with their local projects, the peers have participated in state, statewide on two virtual resident rights bingos, where they not only had fun, but their most very valuable resident rights were 
reiterated to them. The peers launched a statewide staff appreciation project. The peers handed out small tokens of their appreciation to staff across the state. Another great project that we have done recently was the Peer Pen Pal Project, where peers from across the state were matched with other peers to have a pen pal. This helped with the social isolation that was occurring during the pandemic. Each peer that participated in it received a pen pal kit, which included a slanted lap desk, a magnifying light, and many letter writing tools. The peers, as we speak, are currently in the process of advocating for change in the Older Adult Protective Services Act. Specifically in that act for the background checks becoming more frequent for staff that work in long-term care. Currently, the staff that work in long-term care are only required to have a background check upon initial, initial employment. The peers are in the process of writing letters and asking other residents and informing other residents about this project and encouraging them to write letters to the House Appropriations Committee to change this very outdated act. The peer program continues to grow and it's in part to the local ombudsman, the state office and facilities, and most importantly, our peers all working together. And now, I would like to introduce our distinguished guests that we have. Each one of these peers have a vast background and give back to the community they reside in every day. Each one of these peers that we have truly make a difference. Our first peer today is Robert Lindenberry, and he has lived at his facility for seven years. He keeps very busy and has taken it upon himself to do so. Bob oversees maintaining his facility's library. Bob also has been the facility's resident, council, resident council president for several terms. He has also been a peer since 2016 and is an active member of the Peer Advisory Board. Thank you, Bob, for being here. Our next peer is Terry Moore. She, as well, volunteers to manage the resident run library. She sends birthday. Thanksgiving, thank you, and holiday cards to hundreds of residents and staff and assists with the activities programs. Terry earned her RN and BSN working 34 years in the field as an ER nurse. She was a hospital unit supervisor and then in University of Maryland Shock Trauma Center. She taught courses for trauma nursing and emergency pediatric nursing. Terry also served in various leadership roles in her local chapter of Emergency Nurses Association. She represented the state of Maryland numerous times at the National Emergency Nurses Association Conference. She was also a volunteer paramedic for many years with her local rescue squad. Terry's selfless and compassion and resilient leadership has uplifted her community before throughout and surely ongoing after the COVID pandemic. Thank you for being here, Terry. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Donald Mates. He is a peer at Seton Manor in Schoolkill County. Donald hails from Pottsville and has lived at Seton, Seton Manor since June 10th, 2016. He's a graduate of Penn State University where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Petroleum and Natural, Natural Gas Engineering and worked as a supervisor for UGI. Donald has three children, one grandson and another grandson due to arrive in July. He has been a peer for five years, is in an active resident council. Donald has been a member of the Peer Advisory Council since the inception. Thank you for being here, Donald. And now we would like to open the floor up to these wonderful peers and have them answer a few of the questions that we have asked and then you can all also ask questions. So here is our peers perspective. Now I'd like to start with Donald. Donald, how are yeah. things at your facility? Are you back to normal? Would you call that normal? 
Currently, we are back to normal. Our visitation is wide open. Uh, people of all ages, including children, some people bring their pets in. Uh, as far as activities go, everything is, is a go. Now we have religious services, entertainment. We have luncheons and outings. We're fully back to snuff as far as everything goes, as long as we stay green. Right. Now, what about, um, how about outings with your, with your fellow residents? Are, are you back to doing those? Okay, the second week in May is nursing home week, as you know, and that's sure. going to entail a lot of concentration from our activities department. A week after that, we're going to start our outings. There's a Walmart super center near here, which we're sure. going to go to. There's a very, very nice lake where we're going to go. And there's a pavilion there. We're going to have a luncheon and play bingo in the pavilion. There's a very nice dairy bar where we're going to go for country rides for ice cream. Wow. And yeah, we have a lot planned. It sounds like things are pretty much back to normal. That's great news. Yeah. What about dining? Are you back in the dining room as a group? We are not back in the dining room yet. I did inquire and I have not. As soon as we get more staffing, as far as CNAs go like that, and they're actively interviewing and orienting new CNAs, when we have additional CNAs, the dining room is going to open up. Wow, okay. I'm sure that's something that you miss, being with your friends while you're eating your meals. Yeah, we're basically that eating community. in the room now, and it's kind of boring. We want to sure. be in the dining room together. Yeah, sure. I can understand how that would be. Right? Terry, it's back to normal at your facility. To an extent, yes. Um, there was a lot of visitors here this past weekend for Easter weekend. And, and they also, the, the people are bringing their pets in to see their loved ones. And that's really cool. Um, yes. We don't eat together. There, each floor has its own dining room. And again, because of staffing, that's a little hard to do. Um, as for going out, I don't know when that's going to occur. You figure there's 400 beds in this facility. So that's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. <laughs> but of interest about right before COVID hit, somebody <laughs> stole a catalytic converter <laughs> out of our van. So, you know, that we need to get that fixed first before we can go anywhere. Um, the one thing I'm waiting to see happen is to have like the garden club come in. Um, we're not having outside entertainment as it were to come hmm. in yet. Um, I know the, the garden club used to come in and have a little thing about every couple of weeks. Um, hospice used to come in and play bingo with us sometimes. And so that's not happening yet. Uh, Have you inquired about that, Terry? Have you inquired as to um, if 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 it's the groups that have not do, have not asked to come in, or if it's a facility policy? You know, I haven't asked. We have a new um, activities director, so she's still feeling around. You know, getting herself straight, but um, I do need to ask. That would be nice. Um, oh God, there was something I was going to ask you. And I or tell you, and I forgot. Um, but yeah, things are pretty much, I mean, they're never going to be normal. Um, we are green. We're back to getting tested twice a week because I think an aide came, became positive about a week or so ago. But other than that, we're doing good. Hey, that sounds great. Thank you. And, and Bob. What about you? How are things at your facility? Are they back to normal? Almost. Uh, not quite, but almost. We could have like visitors come in and we're trying to figure out going out because they're not letting us go out right now. Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. The meals are pretty much the way they work, the way they were before. It. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. 
So are you back to the dining room then, Bob? Well, for, uh, it should be for lunch and dinner those days, but today at lunch, they uh, told us to go to our, our rooms because they didn't have enough, uh, enough people, enough aides. Right. So this is real interesting for all of us on the call that we have really the um, north central region. We have two peers from there and then we have from the southeast and uh, that the southeast, they are doing uh, dining in the dining room and the the north central is not. And it makes me wonder the north central seems to be a more rural area. Um, maybe not so much in Harrisburg, but it, it makes me wonder if it's about staffing. Um, that that's it's just different from every facility, and just even the outings. How some facilities are just like uh, Donald talked; they were going, they're going all over the place this this summer. You know, we're trying to arrange our our uh, trips again. Right. We just had a. Red we just had a resident council meeting. So uh, that came up. Of course, they didn't really answer it. <laughs> they just say they'll take it into account. <laughs> I don't know. The Did they give you a, sorry about that. Go ahead. The administration just doesn't really help too much in that, you know, when we're getting ready to do it. <clears throat> Right. So when you brought that up at resident council, did they say why you weren't doing outings yet? Was it a staffing issue? Was the van broke or? Well, the van that we do have it only fits like two wheelchairs in it. Mm -hmm. uh, two wheelchairs a day. I think it's four people, four walkers. So, and uh, that that's kind of limited because uh, the the one that we did have before, they came in with a, a van. We could fit 10 people in there. We put it on four wheelchairs and six walking. So that was pretty good. That worked out. And we had two trips a month. Uh, I don't know. We're trying to say they're going to do it now because our administrator keeps saying, you know, he doesn't know what, what he's going to do about it. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Because I, I know being in the community is important for all of you. I mean, just as simple as going to uh, Walmart again. Those, those, those trips are important to be out into the community and do that. So I hope that that happens for all of you in a safe way. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, too. But we can return to going out. Most definitely. Now, okay. So, does anybody have anything else to ask or any um, about things back to normal before we move on to our next question? Is there anything else you thought can think of? No. All right. So, Terry, I'm going to start with you this time. Is your facility experiencing staff shortages? And if so, What's the facility doing to combat that? We are experiencing a stat. We have been. Um, ever since COVID hit, you know, people sure. like quit. Um, and it's been still short. Um, there's a lot of agency people, um, which is what they're doing right now. Um, I know they were giving bonuses at one time. I think they're still doing that. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really heard, but it's, it's, it's not up to snuff. I mean, there are shortages and I'm not saying we're not getting the care we should, but I feel bad for the AIDS because they are so stressed, especially those who have stuck it out with us. Right. You know? And we have a lot of agencies who do not know what's going on or they're, I feel not qualified or they 
you know, I talked, to, I told you about an incident the other day that just they're rude. Some of them are rude. It's like, why are you in this business to begin with? Right. So I'm not real happy with agency people. I know um, you I, and I had a conversation about uh, just the accountability of agency staff in the right, building. Because, right. right. When I they mean, work for somebody different. Yeah. And, and being a retired nurse, this it hurts me because not everybody, but a lot of them gives you, it gives nursing a bad name. They really do. You know, they're, they're listening to the radio and giving out meds at the same time. I mean, yeah. where's your priority and how can you be successfully giving correct medications if you're not paying attention? You know, that's, Absolutely. that's it's quality of care for you as well. I mean, you know, right. you deserve, you're the reason you all are the reason that all the nursing staff are there. Um, what suggestions do you have, Terry, that you can think of for, to combat this, this staff shortage? What else do you think can be done? I honestly, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> You know, going to cutting out, uh, and I can't think of the word I want, cutting out the um, extra monies people are getting for staying home instead of going to work. You know, when, when this all first happened, they were getting extra money, so they people stayed home instead of going to work. You know, needs, that needs to be totally cut out, so people have to go back to work. Um, I know that that's hard to say, but something has to be done to give them the, um, the impetus to come back to work. Right. And I honestly don't know what that is. I'm not sure where that stands right now. I'll be honest with you, whether those that that has happened. How you about know, you, Donald? Um, is your facility experiencing any staff shortages? Very, very few are... <laughs> Census was recently increased. More beds means more money. So there's more staff being hired. There's always adequate staffing scheduled. If someone calls off, then an agency person picks up. So we're basically 100% staffed all the time. Wow. That's really, really great to hear. So you're not having, you're not really experiencing this in Schoolkill County at your nursing facility. Not really, no. Well, I'm happy for you. That's that's great, great, great news. How about you, Bob? Uh, yeah, we have problems with uh, staff shortage, and they uh, they call the agencies, bring them in, and some of the agency people, like in our uh, meeting, that we just had the the uh, agency nurses or giving out like the wrong meds, or they're just not paying attention. They don't know what, some of them don't know uh, where to look for the medications. And it, I don't know, it's just trying to figure out what to do with the people. And somebody that was in the meeting, uh, staff, I mean, that was in the meeting, she told us that what had happened is a lot of, a lot of people ended up scared to come in because of the, the uh, COVID. So they didn't come in. They were staying at home for a little while. Then when, when the money ran short, they got jobs somewhere else at a higher pay. They didn't so, come back. Yeah. Sounds like there was a lot of fear. You're hearing there was a lot of fear in staff and then they they stayed home and then what you said is maybe went to a different occupation. Yeah. Do you know what your your facility is doing to help with the staffing situation? No, I don't accept that they're uh, bringing the agency. That's agency as well. Right. Yeah. And I think part of the problem with a lot of staff nurse aides are going to agency because it pays more. Yeah. 
So that can be a problem, even though there's no benefits. Do you, any, all three of you, do you have any other suggestions that about staffing that could be done? Well, now, I, I think it's funny that, you know, people are going, oh, I'm going to work at Walmart instead. Well, if you stop and think about it, your exposure to COVID is greater by seeing those masses of people that come into to Walmart as you do here where you have a set group that get tested routinely that you know, yes or no, that they have COVID. So you're sure. less to be contaminated as it would be um, here than if you were working at Walmart or the grocery store or someplace. That's a you good know? point, Gary. A very good point. So I, I don't know. Any other comments on staffing? Do you think it would be possible that we get together the residents and the staffing and some of the uh, some of the aides, like I don't know, some of the more positive aides, get together with them and during resident council or or maybe a special meeting. Just so they could see what kind of stuff, uh, what kind of stuff we talk about. And see, I had an aide say that to me. That a lot of, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the aides think we're talking about them, and who we're spending all our time talking about them. And he said that it scares them, and they can't, you know, they don't give all that good a service because they decide who might be a uh, teller on them. And they wow. don't really know. Are you saying at the resident council meetings? Yeah, well, at any meeting, we ought to just maybe do a special meeting now. Because at the end of the resident council, I asked if about the... Uh, getting together with the residents and the aides coming in. And they said, no, I definitely can't do that. The residents were out. Well. The residents, well, the resident council, keep in mind, is your resident council. And you're able to invite or not invite who you would like to be at that meeting, hopefully, you know, so... Certainly you can invite. I don't know if they'll be able to attend whoever you would like. If the, yeah. you know, if, as the council decides that together. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. I just, so our next question, I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to you, Bob. And we're going to start yeah. with you for this one. And it is, if you could have anything for your facility right now, what would it be? Uh, it'd probably be bigger, I don't know, it'd be bigger rooms or something to be able to have things going on. Because we, the room that we have available right now isn't very good and oh man uh, it's not very good starting to lose and we're losing interest so like a lot of other residents don't want to hold don't want to be in the meetings because they said nothing happens plus the fact that like even the activities when we go to have different groups of them it's kind of hard getting together because I don't know. I guess you know, we can't fit enough people in there. So you need a bigger activity. You would want a bigger activity room. Yeah. That's what you would wish for yeah, yourself. I don't, yeah, I don't see how they can do it. It would be nice. Right. How about you, Donald? Well, I have two wishes. Number one, that we 
stay green so that all of our activities and our outings and visitation remain positive and yes. that give our aides a quarter an hour raise because money is an incentive to come to work and you would keep your good staff members here. And that's a great idea. Do you think a quarter would be a good in in incentive or do you think it needs to be more? Well, I, I talk to a lot of aides here and they haven't had a raise, a quarter raise in three years. And to wow. me, that's criminal. If you would give a quarter just to start off, it would be a positive move. A positive mood, a move, a, a step in the right direction, right? Yes. I agree with that. What about you, Terry? What would you, what would you want it to be? Oh, I guess a few things. If it were something possible, um, having enough staff without using the agency, of course. Having a shower in every room would be really nice. Wow, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Person-centered care. Yeah. And I lost some friends. I know you did. And I'd like to have them back. Oh, Terry. So we have that really good friends, and I would like, you know. I know, Terry. You've and, been through a lot at your facility. Yeah, we lost quite a few people. We lost a lot of peers. Um, but that's, that's, you know, if you really want to wish for something, that, that's pretty much what I would wish for, just to get us back on an even keel. Even keel. So with that being said, Terry, what do you hope for, for the rest of this year? It can be anything for the rest of 2022. What's your hope for the rest of this year? Again, more staff. More staff for sure. Yeah. Um, the food service leaves a lot to be desired to get that better. Um, and to be able to go out on outings, but I don't know when that'll happen or just have people come in and entertain us a little bit. Definitely inquire about both of those things, Terry. I will, I will. They're not, it's not unattainable. I mean, other facilities are doing that and, and, and yeah. this, I mean, I don't, even know, I don't even know if their um, activities director knows about it. I'm sure somebody must've mentioned it, but I mean, she's really, she is really good. So Great. That's working. great news. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just hope for things to, to improve. Um, yes. But oh, staffing, staffing would really turn things around here, I think. Staffing. Absolutely. Yeah. Perhaps the outings aren't happening because there's lack of staff in the activities department. I'm not making an excuse for it, but a lot of these things center the dining room. They're saying they center around lack of staffing. So with a full full staff, perhaps some of these things would be happening. So maybe that is like well, the core. They, uh, they would be more apt to get people up every day, like they should be up. Um, you know, you can take my roommate, for instance. She's not in her wheelchair every day. But I think she would love to go to the dining room. Maybe she'll sure. eat her food. Who knows? But um, yeah, I think she needs to get out. We're trying to figure out a way just to get her outside right now. Um, because she's not able to motivate herself. So, you know, somebody would have to take her out. But that's what we're trying to do is get things for everybody who's able to, who just needs help getting around, you know? Right. To cards and to, I mean, the activities try to get as many people as they can, but we just need to get people motivated. That's what needs to happen too, instead of them just laying in bed. Do you think off of that subject do you think because of the pandemic and people being in their rooms that they got used to it and it's harder to get people to be more social that more people got isolated and um comfortable being by themselves and it's yes. harder yeah 
to some I of them. Um, a lot of people came in just after the pandemic started to, to go down. I mean, I look around and I see all these new faces and I'm like, where did these people all come from? They're not right. the ones who pre-COVID, you know? So right. You know, to get them to understand about resident council. I mean, the new people that I talk to, I, I explain it to them. I give them a little card about it. But, um, you know, they get a little welcome thing from from here to all the all the new people that can understand it. But um, we just need to get people motivated to get up and get out. But I think if we have enough staff that can do that to get them going, to get them up, to push them outside and, and stay out with them 10 minutes or however long. Right. I think it'd be great, you know? What about you, Donald? What's your wish for the rest of this year? Uh, like I said, stay green. That way we can have our activities. Uh, a Halloween uh, party with children in. We go in a Halloween parade. We'll have a Christmas party for our families. And we take a trip to Hershey Sweet Lights. With addition, oh. and we stay green, we'll be able to do all that. Oh, right, right. So that is your wish that we can stay COVID free and you stay green and be able to do the things that you wanted to do. I think that that's a great wish. Absolutely. So before that's, does anybody have anything to add about that? Because we have some questions in the chat for you all. We do have some questions in the chat. There was one um, for the peers. It says, do your homes consistently schedule the same staff for residential floors? And there was a second part to that question. What are the pros and cons for keeping the same staff with the same residents? Okay, I can go for that one. Um, it's good to have the same staff. It's consistency. They know who you are. They know what you want. They get to know your, 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 what you like, what you don't like. Um, they're more friendly towards you. Um, when they staff with agency, agency or whoever, the, the PRNs can be on your floor one day, another floor another day, back to your floor, then to a third floor. Rarely do you get those people consistently on your floor. Um, and that makes it hard for them and for us. It's sure. nice to have the same group of people on our floors because they know you. Um, and when they say good morning to you in the morning, and they're more apt to, to talk to you and just stop by and talk to you or whatever as opposed to those people you don't know. How about you, Donald? Do you have anything to say about that? Uh, the residents are more comfortable with the staff members that are here all the time. But if you're having an issue with, a, with a, an agency person, report it at our last resident council meeting, a resident reported an agency person our administrator was there and said she received three other reports and that agency person will never be at our facility again. You spoke great. up. That's great. Yeah, great. You absolutely have to report stuff like that. Absolutely. Great. How about you, Bob? Uh, no. Well, we did report a couple agency people and a couple of the regular aides. So, I don't know. That was one of the things that came up in the meeting today. That they were saying like uh, problems that existed like last month, they're in there this month. And they said them, the ones from last month, the same problems were the month before. And, uh, I found the minutes that I've been keeping like for the past year, a year and a half ago, we had the same complaints about the, the uh, staff 
not really do anything to go of uncalls. Yeah. All right. And Donald, do you have, does your home where you live consistently schedule the same staff for your, like, the wings? Yes. Uh, for first and second shift, it's mostly the same people all the time. Yes. Whether or not they right. call off or not, that's another situation. And then agency people have to come in because the work still has to get done. So do you think there's any cons for keeping the same staff with the same residents? I don't think there's any. I think it's very pro to keep the same staff all the time because the residents are comfortable with the same staff, especially the elderly, the 85-year-old and older. They're comfortable with the same CNAs all the time and the same nurses. I agree. Consistency. All right. I agree with that, too. And that's going to add to quality of life, the quality of care, person-centered care, everything. When you know right. your residents, you're going to do a better job. Right. Because they start to care for us. Absolutely. Too. Sort of like Absolutely. family. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Family. I 100 percent agree with you, Terry. There, there does there's a bond that forms. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions in the chat? Um, there was another comment that said um, that thanked um, the peers for being honest about how you feel about the quality of services. All right. Well, I think that we're going to wrap up our portion, peers. I want to thank all of you for your amazing, as always, uh, it's it's so amazing to be on here with all of you and um, to watch you guys just shine. They are the reason that all of us do what we do. And I just want to thank each one of you. And I also want to thank the ombudsman that helped get them on this call because it's a partnership for sure. And Jamie, thank you for inviting us back again. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Candy, Bob, Donald, Terry, and all the ombudsmen that assisted today. We love having you guys on. So thanks again for coming and sharing your experience. Um, we love having you guys on and hearing your expertise. All right. So to finish up the meeting, um, we're going to review our upcoming meeting topics. And I want to stress that we do not have a meeting on May 3rd. Um, our staff is actually going to be... Um, at a conference that week. So <laughs> we're gonna take a little short break and then we're gonna come back on May 17th with, um, if you file a complaint, who is the perfect person to call? So we're gonna work on that. Might be licensing, might be an ombudsman, um, just kind of give some additional items for our toolkit on who would be the perfect person to call for that. So that is our lineup. And thank you so much everyone for attending. Any specific questions or concerns can go to the state office at 717-783-8975, or you can shoot Jay an email at ltc-ombudsman at pa.gov. Thank you once again to Candy and all of our peer panelists. Um, it's always great having everyone on. So have a great evening, everyone. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, everybody. Have